Welcome into the Motor Center. Chris Miles here with our all-star crew, Angel Gray, Carlos Boozer, and 3D. 3D will join us in a few minutes, but let's start with the matchup tonight, right? Team World versus Team USA. And when I say Team World, every continent is represented, eight different countries. And for Team USA, yeah, we have the top five ranked players and also uh, both players of the year for both the Morgan Wooten Award and the Gatorade Player of the Year, Michaela Williams going to LSU, to the national champions, go to spoil it. You talked about it just with the Morgan Wooten National Player of the Year taking the floor. She can just do it all. She is a coach's dream. She was last year's World Cup MVP, and I think translating over to this level as well, this USA team has the chemistry. Nine players were on that roster last year. This is a player that can do it all, works the baseline, solid at every level. I've heard so many great things about her. I can't wait to see her in action. Can't wait to get this game started. On the world side, Shanice Swain will head into the WNBA draft in just a few days, the projected second round pick. You know, coach told us we got some Aussies on the floor and they are ready to go because they've been playing professionally for a few years. Oh, absolutely. She is pro ready. L watching her film, it's just watching perfection. She's shooting from logo threes. I mean, understanding what she could do on the floor. Great facility passer, knows where everyone is going to be on the floor. She can give it to you any way you want it. And I think having the pro experience already is going to help them in this game in particular. Well, when you say logo range, we're in the perfect place for that because Lo Logo Lillard lives here in the Moda Center. And we have a shooter ourselves on our broadcast team, 3D. Let's head to him. All right, thanks, guys. Super excited to be here, part of this opportunity to watch these young ladies show their talent. And we know the game is universal now and it bounces globally. So to see these ladies to be on this platform with the men and let them know women's basketball is so exciting from the NCAA tournament, now we're here at the Night Youth Summit. Guys, back over to you. All right, 3D, I know we'll be hearing from him on this broadcast. There's that LSU future star we told you about, Michaela Williams, and they're ready to tip. The starters for Team USA, Kelly Williams, Jake Donovan, Hannah Hidalgo, Madison Booker, and Rhea Cunningham. For the international side, Diana Collins, who's headed to Ohio State, Letty Vasconcelos, and Toby Fournier, Nadia Pouch, and Shanice Swain, and it's Team USA controlling the tip. Going inside immediately, and Cunningham sealing and finishing. Barnes has to be happy with what she's going to get in Cunningham. So solid, as we just mentioned, going to Arizona, but just knows when and where to get the ball on the inside. Pooch with a strong take and a tough make. Come on, come on, we talked about it all day, that were on the roster. Pooch being one of them, and I think at this, at this point, she's at six foot. She looks so long on the field, about six foot, but can beat everyone. Back to back on the finishes. Cunningham connects again to the Pooch. Pressure in the backcourt, and that's something that we saw in the scrimmage that Sue Phillips, head coach of Team USA, worked on for almost an entire practice. It was not almost an entire practice. <laughs> it was the entire practice of Sue Phillips. It was sixth assignment with USA Basketball. She has 28 seasons and years with her high school team. She just understands what it takes to win. And that's Toby Fournier, a Duncan sensation with her first attempt, but it goes a little too hard. Anna Hidalgo, her first shot is off. Go back to what E3 was talking about. And he said he talked about this being the first women's Nike Summit. We have to mention how awesome that is and how the rise of women's basketball is what we're seeing, especially coming off the NCAA tournament. 9.9 .9 million viewers, the most men or women for a college event. I think that's so cool to see the ascension of women's basketball. Absolutely, and working with that right now, the attention that you see here, a lot of fans are ready in the building, as we're getting started here on the West Coast of the 4.30 in the afternoon, and the fans are very excited, you can tell. Headed to the free throw line, Jaden Donovan. Going to Duke next year. Guard out of the District of Columbia, the District of Champions, depending on who you talk to. I like that, I like that. <laughs> And she nails the free throw. So Team USA takes an early lead, five to two. The 
work inside. We've seen a lot of post moves. That one just a little too hard by Letty Vasconcelos. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing her play. She's six seven and watching her work out before the game. Got great footwork. Does a good job inside with her body. Looking forward to seeing how that size can help. Pooch on the floor. Kick the dime. Three on the shot clock, too. They got to make sure someone's aware of that. Never hit the rim. And it's off Cunningham. Gets the board. Hidalgo right back inside. Booker denied. And you can feel the presence inside from Vasconcelos, the 6'7 center going to bail. I know you're excited about this. We already talked about a couple of players that can like throw it down in this game. Well, I saw her catch an alley oop in a video. So if we could see a couple go down today, I think a lot of the fans in this building will be very excited about that. And I'll be one of them. I'll jump out <laughs> my seat for that. Cookies, Hidalgo with the steal. Crafty. The, the McDonald's game co-MVP reminding us of how she set that scoring. Started with some defense, tried to turn it into some offense. And he'll head to the free throw line. Her balance, her speed, just the understanding of where she is on the floor. I mean, she's just so solid. You mentioned what she did in the McDonald's All-American game, going to Notre Dame, also going to be able to learn from another All-American in Neil Ivy. And then she's going to be joining Olivia Citron. I mean, it's just... Olivia Miles as well. I mean, the amount of talent they have in that backcourt already is going to be scary for next year. Checking into the game, Aaliyah Del Rosario, a center that's also going to LSU. <laughs> so we've talked about a national player of the year now, Aaliyah Del Rosario. Stands at 6'6 at center. So bringing in some size. And the foul is committed by Nunu Agaro, who is headed to Stanford. She also checks into the game. LSU was just reloading. Huh? Just reloading. Reload and explode is what they Alexis Morris has put her name in the WBA draft, which is going to be on Monday. We're excited to see whose uh, dreams are going to come true on that stage on Monday. And just being able to see how this game is growing, the talent is endless and in really good hands. Pressure by Team USA all over the floor and the shot wide open look is a little too strong by Swain. Swain gets another look back to back misses and back to back offensive rebounds inside by Coot. Good pass. Uh, nice Coot, the pride of Kenya would be finished. It's so crazy to hear her story, too. She played volleyball originally. She said she wanted to switch over and transition to basketball. It only took her a month to understand what she needed to do in the game. She is a raw talent. Booker from outside. Book it. So Team World has missed their last five shots, have not scored in the last two minutes, and the pressure continues to be put on by Team USA. Teams, though, need to make sure that they're taking care of the ball. We're seeing pressure on both sides. Half fun to finish. Swain breaks the drought. Adalgo, tough take and draws the contact, and we've seen that a number of times from her. Yeah, great job right here. Kick back to Booker for the wide open three. That's a great job to knock him down for Team USA. Booker headed to Texas, two-time gold medalist with Team USA, both U16 and U17. And they've had a lot of continuity with this one. Also, guys, keep in mind they're doing a 24-second shot clock, so we've seen a lot more possessions, especially with the pressure being put on. Wider lane, 24-second shot clock. Some differences between the local game and the international game. And these, of course, are FIBA rules. Good point, Bruce. See how a couple of those apply. Even in the women, if we see a couple of dunks as well. Ooh. No goaltending. So, point, no goaltending. Team USA, this is the smallest group they've had on the floor now. They've had a six foot center, or six foot six, I should say, center on the floor for the first couple of minutes of this first quarter. Stay down. Stay down. 
Swain. Back to back buckets. So that's what I was telling you in the beginning. Swain is just one of those players that knows when and where to get the basket in. I mean, a much needed basket for her team. Right now, they have the momentum. I wanted to pull it from right there. Team Road gets another possession, so they are hitting the offensive boards. Swain, she's on fire. No Seven consecutive points. No hesitation. She's cold blooded and she's attacking every time she got the ball. Played for the UC Capitals in Australia, and if you're looking at her film online, I mean, you're taking notes because she can do it all. Booker, a little too strong. And as we mentioned, Swain going into the WNBA draft, this is a good showcase for her to showcase her skills and try to improve her stock. Almost had a nice finish on the reverse underneath. At this point, as we mentioned, she's a great facilitator. How does she get everyone else involved? KK Arnold with the tough take. One of two players on this USA team that's going to Connecticut. I love how she has so many different counter moves in her bag. The outside shot, a big strong for Shorts. KK, double crossover, and a <laughs> nice shot. Quickly down the floor, rocket. Diana Collins headed to Ohio State. Her mom played ball too at West Florida. She attributed says, hey, my mom taught me this game. She coached her as well. But I like that she's a nice athletic combo guard. Williams. Did he say that all night? Absolutely, but it's there. Stop ball! So we have our first timeout, and it's needed a break. Swain, seven points leading the way. Two buckets inside and a three. Team USA building an early lead here. 19 to 13, and it's been a balanced attack for Team USA. On the other side, though, Swain has been killing it for Team World, leading them in scoring. But who we see on our screen right now? Sue Phillips, feisty in practice. She gets her point across. That's what we saw this week. I just love the way that she delivers her message, and obviously her understanding how to win at this level. They trust her, her voice was sharp, and I love how the structure was as well. Everyone was moving, it was about communication. They had to say different things, like what school they were going to. At one point, they were passing to each other, addressing each other's middle names. So not just communication that way, but understanding how to build a chemistry on the spot. Team World looking to find some offense without Swain on the floor. And an illegal screen called on Vasconcelos. We should know for Team USA, we have not seen Juju Watkins, the Gatorade National Player of the Year. We did see her in practice, but Luz, you have some insight on that. Yeah, my man Ellis from USA Basketball told me that she has sprained her ankle during the McDonald's game and going to take it a little bit easy. So if we don't see her tonight, I'm surprised, but one of the best players that we have in America. And if yes. we don't see her tonight, I think everyone else has seen her at some point. Throughout her career in high school, I mean, one of those players that has respect across the board, has done so many great things at Sierra Canyon. So, the number one overall player in the country. You already mentioned it, Chris, with her being in the Gatorade Player of the Year as well. It's going to be unfortunate not to see her on the floor, but definitely a player that we can't wait to see on the next level. Yes, a ton of talented guards, though, to take her place and to eat those minutes, and we're seeing the production. Speaking of which, UConn headed Ashlyn Shade. Well, she can shoot it from outside. No shade. <laughs> Skilled passer, too. I love how she does everything just in a pocket. Like, there's no limit on her. It was one thing I believe that Coach said about her, Gina Arnim, and said, you cannot put her into a box, and that's what makes her so dangerous. And there's Michaela Williams with the miss inside. 
the offensive rebound and the putback by Jaden Donovan. She'll head to the free throw line. So Carly Clark, the head coach for the world team, you know, she gave us some good nuggets about trying to get this together, right? She said, well, we have players right off flights and right on the floor. We're saying 18-hour flights dedicated. They had two extra days of practice because Team USA has some continuity, whereas this group, they're just getting together and had to practice a little bit. She said, I have to teach them through playing. One week to build a team is not very easy, but when you have some of the best talent in the world, you definitely make it work. And with this group, they understand what it takes to win. They're professionals already. And we've talked about even what it's like to be an international player. They are professionals at 14, 15 years old. So they understand how to ring the bell, how to step up each day and be a professional. Donovan on the break. And she'll head back to the free throw line where she was the last trip down the floor. And she stands out amongst the group as far as her speed, athleticism, and ability to turn defense to offense. That's a fifth turnover on Team World. So that's an unsportsmanlike foul. So she'll get trip to the free throw line in a good position. Headed to Duke, Kara Lawson uh, definitely has a talented individual coming in her, Celeste Taylor also. So here's the unsportsmanlike foul called on Dursis. Essentially a take back. They're not saying that's a flake. They're saying that's a take back. Do you agree? Well, I would have to. If you got two free throws and they get the ball back. And at this point, even with the different rules for FIBA, that, that's what's established in this game. Any player has to understand what the, the rules are. Williams, 0 for 2 from long range. I love the pressure that Team USA is putting on the national team right now. They're all over the ball. They're rocking it. Only been together for a week and doing a great job. Collins, cash. And there goes the three. And that was a much needed bucket as well that brings them within single digits once again. But it, they have to get things done and keeping them out of the paint on the other side. J.K. Arnold, and a hard fall. Take another look. Without Swain in the game, Team World struggling for some offense, and Collins provided she now has five points. And just as you said that, Swain comes right back in the game. Nine-point deficit now by Team World. They also have... Five turnovers. So it's something to keep an eye out on. Team USA's pressure has been working. Kiki Arnold going to Connecticut. I thought it was really cool just hearing her story, but most importantly, who she's compared to. The walking bucket in Enrique Agumawale. Mm. Well, that's, that's a lot to live up to. That's high praise. That's one of our favorite players. KK, after that hard fall, takes a seat on the bench after going to the free throw line. 11 point lead for Team USA and the pressure continues. Fournier to the cup, contact, no call. Adal go to Williams. Her first mate from long range. You can see that in LSU next year. Crazy just watching her, the spacing on the floor, how they advance the ball up the court. Like, this is a team that just hasn't had two, to, two a days in playing a week. They know where each person is going to be on the floor because of their experience last summer at the World Cup. Team World still has not made a basket in the last So we saw the three from Collins since then, no made baskets. Swain's trying to provide the offense. She had that spark, seven straight points earlier in the quarter. Well, they need that again. The well, thing about Swain is that coming off of the pick, especially on the wing, she's assessing what the defense is doing. That hesitation move, trying to see where her post player is going to roll, pick, pop, whatever they're going to do. 
calling her own number, getting to the basket, taking the contact. That's why we say at the top of the game, she's pro ready, understands, has a very high IQ in this ball game of when and where to attack the rim. So this is the first trip to the free throw line for Team World. So they are two for two. Team USA, well, they've been living at the line. They've taken a lot more free throws. They're 10 for 12. Williams. Be careful on that baseline. She can make some magic happen. Looking for the assist in the push inside by Del Rosario. That was pretty obvious. That was an easy one to call, right? Both arms extended as she fought for the Collins made the last basket for Team World. Oh, she's at it again. What I saw in her take, too, is that she thrives in transition. They had the numbers. She pulls up. Bucket. Bit of a shuffle of the feet. So back-to-back -back turnovers for Team USA. And you could feel the energy from Team World right now trying to claw back in this game. Oh, great hustle right there. And that is what Jaden Donovan brings to the table. I was going to say that, too. Duke in the ACC was known to be the best defensive team in the conference. Carol Lawson, that's what they thrive off of. You have the returning ACC Player of the Year. And Celeste Taylor returning as well. That's what you're going to get all out. You can do it on both ends. You mentioned it, but it's just how she makes offense from her defense. Absolutely. Great job right there being a habit from a fifth perfect lead with the Blue Devils. Swing with a nice feed inside. Oh, oh. Too strong. Collins. Up that count. Nine points. Shot is as smooth as yours, Chris. We saw you pregame. <laughs> you know I still got it. <laughs> oh, that's up for debate. But that was a nice shot by Collins for sure. Great pass, interior from Booker to Del Rosario. Ten seconds left in the first quarter. Great defense by Team USA. That is now nine turnovers in the first quarter. Welcome back to the Nike Hoop Summit here on NBA TV. And Angel, watching Swin play, the way she puts the ball on the floor, looks for the pick and roll, and get to the three, sets up her teammates. Pretty impressive, the kind of last four or five minutes she put on here. Just watch how patient she is in the pick and roll action. Stopping and popping, getting to the paint, a little floater right here. Just very impressed on her feel for the game, Angel and the fact that she's going to be a part of the double NBA draft. Look at that three ball, leave it. That shooter's paradise right there at this finals. Yeah, Angel? I'm checking you out on, over there on the other side of the table. Sad you can't be over here with us, 3D. Well, you know I, But I, I tell you what, but I tell you what, I see you shaking your head and understanding when you see talent on the floor, it's hard to miss. And Shanice Swain is one of those players that walks on the floor and makes her presence known, and a big reason why they have a chance in this game, just a 10-point game. 48. Ah! Turn the bucket. She's known as the dunking sensation, having won every dunk contest she's been in. You can see the hops as she takes the contact and finishes strong. Yeah, great job faking the handoff to Swain and attacking the basket. I thought she was going to go over the top right there, but got the hand one, too. I know you stood up a little bit. I was a little nervous. I thought you were going to run out on the court. I got to contain you over here. <laughs> I got a little excited. When, when she jumped, I felt the table was about to flip over because the, the big grizzly bear was going to flip this thing over. Booker not afraid to shoot. We've seen it. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. The open look, too strong. Team World has numbers, but the pressure remains strong from Team USA. Swain, too short. Doggo on the break. And she will head back to the free throw line, where she has lived here in the first half. Yeah, I just love how she puts pressure, gets a turnover, and attacks the basket. She just is a relentless attacker of the basket. That's why she's living on the free throw line. We are just into the second quarter. 
and these will be her seventh and eighth free throw attempts. We already talked about her going to Notre Dame. It's Sonia Citron that she's going to be in the backcourt with. Olivia Miles, who had a knee injury. She couldn't finish for postseason play, but when I say scary, watching what she can be for that roster, I mean, this is a Notre Dame team that everyone predicted they could possibly be in the Final Four. So it, they did have the injury bug, but seeing what she's been able to display is just really impressive. Well, you and I have discussed how great this NCAA tournament was on the women's side where <laughs> that all of the eight teams in the Elite Eight felt like any of them could have won the national championship. Let me tell you something, you couldn't get a ticket. Like the tickets, like I saw grown men scalping tickets trying to figure out how they could get in the building to see the talent. I mean, Caitlin Clark going back and forth, Angel Reese, you have Dawn Staley that was trying to stay perfect. Got to the final four, they were taken down. But I mean, even Virginia Tech and Kenny Brooks are making history with his squad. This game continues to grow with so many great stories within it, and I can't wait to see what the next year holds. Excellent points that you make about the women's tournament. Toby Fournier, we saw her finish on the other end and then draw the offensive foul on the defensive end. She's one of the youngest players here. So she's an underclassman from Canada. Moose. But when you, when you step on the floor, underclassman, upperclassman, wherever class you want to be, you're playing with something on your chest and the pride that goes into that. Like, you may have jitter stepping on the floor at first, but once everything settles, you're playing the game you love. Yeah, I mean, once you're on the court, you belong. Obviously, you're playing for your country, you're playing for your national your national team, and that's a huge honor. And as athletes, we don't take that lightly. So all these girls out here are doing a great job of representing their country and, and playing their, their hearts out. Donovan can't convert. The open look from long range, and that is easy money. The lead yeah. now is cut to four. Yeah, Swords, if you're going to leave her out, I mean, wide open, man, hand down, man down. Yeah. World team now three for seven from long range. And the mid range is alive. Big bucket for new. For Nunu. I mean, just a player that is so solid. I like that she's never sped up. 48, taking it to the hole again. Contact as she goes up. And we have a timeout, but it's 48. Pass it to 48. Going to work inside. No, we do not have a timeout. Got a, a little bit of a push. Yeah. It looks like we had mass substitutions for both sides. And Team USA running the floor. That's the seventh turnover from Team World. Woo, great finish right there. Beautiful job attacking the big and finds the angle to get the bucket. KK getting buckets. She has eight points here in the second quarter. Swain. Cole. KK pushing the pace. To the bucket. Goes back to the right hand. Del Rosario there to clean it up. Another player that's going to LSU. You talked about it, just them reloading. Kim Mulkey. I mean, she's creating gold for LSU in her second season. We know that she was a winner at Baylor. And in her second season, being able to get a title with nine new players on the roster, it's going to be crazy for next season. For those just getting familiar with the Nike Hoop Summit, this is the 25th year. It showcases top men's and women's high school seniors versus the best 19 years or younger players from around the world. When we say that, Check out what's happened in the past. This is, of course, the first year 
for the young women. For the men, yeah, there's been 250 alumni drafted, wow. 14 number one overall picks, 90 in the top 10, five MVPs on the men's side. When you hear that, Boozer, I would say this has been a success. Absolutely. I mean, this is an opportunity for all these players to get a chance to play against great competition in the NBA arena, NBA environment, or WNBA environment for the women. And there's tons of scouts here. We saw at practice yesterday, there had to be 50 to 60 scouts watching all these kids play. So you're getting an opportunity to play right in front of the people that are going to make the decision, like on Monday for the women, right. to get drafted and also for the men later on in, in June. So very exciting opportunity here. And, and you see a lot of successful players come out of this game. When you say successful players, we were also told the first Hall of Fame, Hall of Famers, Tony Parker, Dirk Nowitzki, being inducted this year. So that's how good this has been. First year of the showcase was, of course, 1995, featuring one Kevin Garner. Whew. One of the best to ever do it right there. And the next year, 96, they had Dirk Nowitzki. I can't wait till we can share those stories about the women. Like, oh, went first round and legend. That'll be nice. I guess Swain will be the trivia question answer, right? Who was the first woman drafted <laughs> out of the Nike Hoops? We'll keep that in the back pocket, though. Back pocket. But you could tell her game is beyond her age. I think she's 17. Um, but she's an amazing talent. She's been playing pro for a long time. Got great vision, does a great job of getting her teammates involved. And as you can see, can score from all three levels on the court. Yep, so Shanice Wayne, 19, just watching her play professional overseas. These are women, too, that have played internationally. We've talked about how they've competed in the World Cup and FIBA games, 3x3, three 3-on-3, three, three three, what people call that as well. But they've known each other, competed against one another. So while they may, may be wearing different jerseys, they're very familiar with each other's style and name. Team World will maintain possession. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Under six minutes to go here in the first half. Swords. Too strong. And the first bucket of the game for the representative of Japan, Reina Fuku. Shade short. Fuku is hilarious. Watching some of her videos about how this opportunity is amazing for us. And another bucket on this other side for the world women's side. She's a comedian. She said she's going to relish the moment when she can score over a player that's a little bit taller than her. Crossover. Arnold heading back to the free throw line. This will be the 18th attempt for Team USA from the free throw line. And Arnold has been living there. Tap, tap between the legs. Made you bite, made you look. Everything else that you can add to it. Now she's getting two free throws at the charity stripe. You love to see the ball on a string with Arnold. So tough. I love her kicks, too. You told me those are Sabrina Unescu sneakers, Yeah, right? Sabrina Unescu, who's also going to be in uh, lip with the Liberty. That team is loaded on the WNBA side. But I mean, Oof. Oof. my goodness. But some nice kicks that just dropped. Actually, I was wondering when we were going to see a little swag bag or something. Well, I said to you, Can I thought that Boo's got to Boo's got to get on that. <laughs> I thought they were I thought they were Kobe sneakers when I saw them. That's the first thing I said to you when I saw several players on the team wearing them. And I and I immediately said I wouldn't be surprised if there was some type of collab. She's very close with the Bryant family, very close with close with Vanessa and, and the kids as well. And so for her to have that great relationship with the late great Kobe Bryant and everything that he taught her for her game. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of, of a collab and mesh there with those shoes. So Team USA built a 10-point lead late in the first quarter. And since then, Team World has kind of helped serve, Bruce. Where yeah, it's just a nine-point game now. They're doing a great job of, of adapting to the pressure. They're moving the ball a little bit better. The World team is doing a good job of finding cutters. They're also attacking a little bit more in transition. So that's helped them a lot to cut the lead down a little bit. But it's still a nine-point lead for Team USA. Dursis trying to find 48 inside. Instead, it's their 10th turnover. Booker trying to go coast to coast. Kicks it to Williams. Knocked down. Williams is heating up. That's your Morgan Williams. That's the player of the year for a reason. 
can get things done on both ends of the floor. Schwartz trying to go right back at you. Hidalgo gets the board. Going coast to coast. Too strong. The pace is picking up. Swartz looking inside. Swartz, no go. Fournier, Ooh, good move right there. Six points now for Fournier. Well, now you see it, now you don't. Nice move by Donovan, but can't get it to go. Too strong, but Durst is there on a putback also too strong. So there's Fournier inside. Nice move. And then on the other end, attacking the basket, finding the open shooter, and Williams knocks it down. I'm Team USA ahead by 10 with under four minutes to go here. The Nike Hoop Summit on NBA TV is brought to you by Nike. Welcome back to the first ever women's game here at the Nike Hoop Summit between Team USA and Team World. It's a 10 point deficit. That's what it's been for the first parts of the show in the second quarter. And Booms, 10 turnovers for Team World. 18 to 3 discrepancy at the free throw line. That's the difference in the game so far. Yeah, big difference right there. Team USA did a great job from the opening tip putting pressure on the world team. It took the world team a little bit of time to catch up. They're still down by 10, but doing a little bit of a better job of moving the ball around, making shots, finding the open man, or over woman, I should say. And they're picking the pace. Remember, there's a 24 second shot clock, which is a little different if you're playing Team Rules. Now 11 turnovers for Team World. Williams, shake it big, can't make. And another foul inside on Team World. Hector Sanchez, the official on the call, says that it's a two-shot foul. No, they're going to take it out on the baseline. Williams inside to Del Rosario. Soft touch, but it's off. USA looking to push the pace every time they ground they grab a rebound well, get a turn. well that's a sound for coach Phillips as well that's what she wants to do she knows what's what it's going to take at the next level and you can see the pace growing. we already mentioned this with a few time with shot clock 24 seconds but I think overall in the game the game is becoming faster what they're looking for is to advance the ball and what you're going to do in the first I would say five to six seconds of the shot clock so Overall, that pace factor is something that she said. Everyone has to touch the ball, but quickly. Team USA with seven steals of those 11 turnovers that they forced. I'm not shocked at all. She said defensively, that's where our bread and butter is going to have to be. We're going to have to force everyone to make a tough shot. Fournier in trouble. Vons Collins, who was hot in the first quarter, has not scored in the second. KK on the other side. How about the pesky defense? Those are the type of plays that I get excited about. I was more of a defensive player. But when you can see a player that is already known for what she can do offensively, but really taking the pride to shut down a player that put in a lot of work in the first quarter, a coach loves to see that. 12 turnovers now for Team World. Booker, in and out. Nunu on the boards. And the theme continues. Turnover on one end, free throws on the other. Team USA doing a great job of taking good shots. And also attacking the glass. And that's why they're going back to the free throw line. So for Nunu heading to Stanford has been very active 
around the glass and around the basket in this first half. I think just active in her career is the reason why she's able to be a representative in this game. Just hearing her story, she said, I'm a gold medalist because it's been a dream of her since she was a freshman. She credited all of her success to her trainer, Rez. She at 6 a.m. practices. He knew her goals, and so he held her accountable. And she said, no one knew me in the eighth grade, and now I get to represent my country on this stage. That's awesome. Collins with the feed inside. And it was, look what I found here, a wide open teammate. And Nadia Pooch, who finishes. <laughs> Stay ready so you don't have to get ready, right? Mm -hmm. And check this out. Carly Clark, head coach for Team World, is absolutely livid because on the previous possession, she was talking to Hector Sanchez and says, hey, 20 to three, really? The free throw line? Up that count, 22 to three now. The discrepancy in free throws here in the first half. Moves. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the world team has to take a note and, and drive the basket a little bit right there, go a little harder. Team USA has been aggressive from the tip, and so the referees are rewarding that aggression. Way to break it down for us. 12 point difference. Two and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Coach added again, and she will go to the free throw line. Like he said, Boos, aggressive, active, rewarded. Good job right there, faking the pass right there, and driving to the ball hard, basket hard. You see her doing a great job of attacking the basket, and, it, and, that, and she'll be rewarded for that with two free throws. So Swain checks back into the game. Remember, she had that run where she scored seven straight points. She has nine points total. So with 2.15 to go here in the first half, let's see if she can spark that offense a bit. It's been stagnant. Also checking into the game for Team USA, Jada Williams, who's headed to Arizona. And she can light it up from outside. We've seen that. Oh, absolutely. The other side, though, with Pooch, I mean, just watching her film as well with the Southside Flyers, the, the Aussie and what she was able to do. I love just being able to go now to YouTube or any other clip and say you can find players that were once, you didn't know about them playing overseas. This is a raw talent, just so good, long on the defensive end. We've seen her going through passing lanes, stretching across the lane to get to her side, and now back at the free throw line. So those are the type of plays that's going to keep them in this, in this game. It's actually a side oh, out of bounds. Okay. It looked like they were going to free throw line. They were lining up. I was hoping so. <laughs> Swain wow. checks back into the game and takes a automatic. Comes off the bench, knocks a three down, makes the lead go from down to eight points. Just excited for this team. Did a great job of being aggressive right when you check in. Del Rosario with the size advantage. Fournier gets the stop, and we have a player on the other end. Yeah, got the Madison eye. Booker. And Fournier finishes on one end while Booker remains down. It looks like a contact came out. She is checking out of the game. But Fournier now doing a good job of remaining aggressive. She has eight points. And this is now a six point game. Check out Del Rosario. 48 here on defense. Especially underneath. I think more than anything, we're trying to figure out why, you know, she's going to take a trip to the end of the bench to see with the trainers if it's a contact or just some a poke in the eye. Hidalgo denied by Fournier. I think that's her strongest upside defensively, being able to protect the paint. Rosario getting into the post again. This time she draws the foul. And I say, too, great uh, wherewithal to understand where she needed to get the ball on the floor. We have an update on what's happening with Madison Booker. Here is 3D. Yeah, guys, Madison's at the end of the bench right now. Her contact did get knocked out. She's talking to the trainer right now. She's shaking her head that she's feeling better. But as of right now, she's on the end of the bench. She's not going back in the locker room, and they're trying to get her a new contact, guys. Thanks, 3D. We should point out that Del Rosario stands at 6'6", and is being defended by Fournier, who's 6'2", and more of a wing player, if anything. So that's a lot for her to try to handle down low. Isn't that funny, though, just our conversation with Coach Clark talking about they may be faster and stronger and taller than us, but at the end of the day, 
we've earned this opportunity too. So they're not making any excuses with the disparity in the height. These are women that are feisty and go after it as well. Hidalgo on the break. She connects with Williams, who can't connect with her bucket. But Michaela Williams there on the putback. Eight-point game, under a minute to go. Williams now with eight points. Going to Louisiana State next year. LSU, reloading. Dursis unloads. Fournier hits the glass again. And will head to the free throw line. I see you, Fournier. I mean, relentless at the rim, doing everything she can to get a second, third, fourth opportunity. Well, what's interesting is Coach Carly Clark told us about Toby Fournier because Toby's known as a dunker, right? Anytime you have a player capable of making exciting plays like Caitlin Clark, right, shooting threes, people want to watch her flashy plays. But her impact in the game, it's blocking shots, protecting the rim, not just dunking. And that's actually what we're seeing so far here in the first half. Yeah, I mean, when your coach can say you are disciplined defensively, that's a great foundation, which you can build off of as well. And we're not seeing her at her ceiling. So great that you can get up on the rim and, you know, be a, re a rebounder as well. But I think her packages are only going to get better and better. Just seeing her footwork in the paint as well has been impressive in this game. Yeah, loving her activity right now, guys. She's 17, one of the youngest girls that we have out here and doing a great job of helping her team. 35 seconds to go. 12 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Hidalgo has been off here in the first half. So we saw her set the McDonald's All-American game record for 26 points. We know she can fill it up, but she's 0 for 4 from the floor here in the first half. And that was just last week. So the travel, how much does that come into play? Talked about for the world women where they had to come from. A nice pick on the other side. Hidalgo Whoa. tripped up. And that is Pooch on the floor with the foul. And Hidalgo, the fact that she's 0 for 4 for the floor, she is 5 for 6 on the free throw line. Let's take a closer look. Hidalgo with the quick hands. And there she takes the spill. Just ran out of real estate. She had a seven-point game, 14 seconds to go here in the first half. And that's something that we may go overlooked about a star player, right? When they're struggling from the floor, what else do they bring into the table? What we see from Hidalgo, 0 for 4 from the field, 5 for 6 from the free throw line, active on defense. That's exactly what it is, though, Chris. What are you going to do when your shot isn't falling? A coach wants to see how you're going to impact the game in the right way, and that's how you become elite. That's how you become a player that's going to be uh, a top player on the professional side as well. So I think we're seeing her do all the little things that makes the team better. Moose, I know you love the work inside, the post action, and, you know, making sure that they get the touches. What do you think about both teams making sure that their inside presence is felt? Yeah, they started the game off going inside, which is great to see that presence. And now you see the guards driving and slashing to the basket, getting to the free throw line as well. I love Fournier's activity, trying to do a good job of bringing the world team back with her activity. So it's going to start to pick up. I'm curious to see how they play this last 14 seconds out and we'll see what they do in the second half as well. While we're showcasing all the players that are on the floor, I think we should mention, for those just tuning in, Juju Watkins, the kind of special player that she is not on the floor in this game because of an ankle injury. Gatorade National Player of the Year heading to USC. Angel, can you enlighten the audience a little bit more about her for those who are not aware? Great with the capital G. I mean, she can do everything for her team, and it's not just the, her ability to score. Obviously, seeing what she can do out of Sierra Canyon, she's going to USC, and Lindsey Gottlieb has a treasure in her offensively. This is a team that also needed some offense in this previous season, getting back to the NCAA tournament. But I think just with her, I mean, it's excitement. She brings everything that you want, the full package. I think even more than that, just in the NIO. We were on the plane, and I'm studying over the notes, and I see her on an AT&T commercial. <laughs> yeah. So more than anything, it's just exciting to see how she's growing the game. 
Absolutely. I mean, when you told me that story, because we sat next to each other on a plane, you were like, I just saw one of the players, Juju Watkins, in the commercial. And there it is. <laughs> Game is growing. Times are changing. And I went to school at the wrong time. <laughs> Hidalgo, seven for eight from the free throw line. So she has seven points, despite the fact that she has not made a bucket from the floor. Ten seconds to go. Collins, the future Buckeye inside the 48. Wow. Yes! Count the bucket, and that's how the first half ends. Team World makes it a seven-point game. 48, 11 points, eight rebounds, providing a spark in the second quarter to an offense that was absolutely stagnant. And the second half action begins right now. And don't forget, after the women are done, the men are taking the floor for the second game of our doubleheader. Seven-point game as we start the second half. Swain way off. Williams, National Player of the Year, too strong. Team World will get possession. I think in that look, too, just right out of the gate, I like the aggression. However, just knowing that you're drawing two other defenders, how you can find touches, who's the open man, and reading the defense a little bit better in that situation. Toby Fournier has impressed me so much. You talked about it, Chris, being a player coming into this game known for what she can do and throwing down the basketball. She's showing us ball handling, being a perimeter player. At 6'2", she's at combo guard. She could be a forward as well, so she just does a lot of things well. Guarding centers in the post, but handling the ball on the outside. Not too bad. Swain. Ooh. Inside, and it's a great finish by Vasconcelos. Oh, the dime right there to the big Brazilian. Great finish right there in the bank. 6'7 center headed to Baylor. Hidalgo still looking for her first bucket. Cross court to KK. Booker from the top of the key, and she can hit it from outside. I was going to say that as well with the way that they've been playing a soft man coming out in the second half. They're almost daring USA to knock down the triple. So those are the type of shots Booker is going to have to take and make. Swain will head to the free throw line. And so Swain, one of four Australians on this team. We mentioned she's going to enter the WNBA draft in just a few days. Putting on a good performance looking to increase her draft stock. I had to go in the, in the bag and reach out to a couple of my friends that played in Australia and just say, who is Shanice Swain? I'm watching this film. Is she as good as what's being displayed on this screen? They were like, she's even better than that. She's feisty. She knows when and where to get the ball up the floor. Look at that pass. Look away. Woo. Like, are you kidding me right now? Love to play with a guard like that. Responsible for the first four points of the second half for Team World. We have a six-point game. And went on a 7-0 run herself. Swain now with 14 points. That's her first bucket, and she will head back to the free throw line for her ninth attempt here at the start of the second half. So Hidalgo, we mentioned just her heading to Notre Dame. Neil Ivy and what she has in that squad already. She misses the free throw, but I love the stories about players that say, I noticed that I wasn't delivering everything and giving everything to this game that I could. She said she put the extra work in her, her sophomore season. As you can see, that's a violation in the backcourt for the eight count. But just seeing how she's been able to just leave everything on the floor, a passion player, Remember, 24-second shot clock, FIBA rules, wider lane. Team USA has adjusted well. Hidalgo. And Booker, just a little too strong. Nunu on the boards. Booker back at it. Looked like Fournier got a piece of that, couldn't tell. Take a closer look. 
The officials say no, that she did not touch it. So it's an eight point ball game, and just with the world too, I don't know if we were able to show it, but we got a little inside scoop from 3D when he took some time with Sue Phillips and she talked about the adjustments they had to make. She said we have to do a better job on the defensive boards and match coming transition. So far, I see them doing just that in the second half. Ooh! Rejection! Donovan, the block, and then the basket. You can catch her and camera in the stadium next year with the Blue Devils, baby. <laughs> Quick we shout out. We were waiting out. for you to do it. Waiting for you to do it, Booze. Somewhere. Ooh. And one by Booch. Jaden Donovan, we told you the athleticism is there. Unbelievable athlete, but does a great job of turning defense and the offense right there. The blue, the Cameron Crazies are going to be going crazy real soon. Somewhere, Kara Lawson is doing just what you're doing, Booz. Having a popcorn, a bag of popcorn in front of her saying, yeah, I'm excited about next year and what we're able to bring in. I know offensively what you're seeing on this side and how she's able to stretch, but defensively, she's so sound. And to go with Celeste in that backcourt, I mean, obviously the defensive player of the year, great job bringing this this player in right here because it adds to what Kara Lawson is doing over there. Pooch with the end one. She now has eight points. Nunu with the range. Pressure, tough to get it inbounds. And a foul on the interior. That will go against Booker. And it's hard to deal with Letty Vasconcelos in her 6'7 frame. <laughs> you can see the difference. She towers over everyone on the floor. I don't know many other players. I did cover South Carolina with Cardoza at 6'7 as well. I do believe there's a 6'7 in the transfer portal at this point too, but you can't teach size. <laughs> like that's something where if you can develop that type a player, and she has beautiful touch, great hands underneath, great footwork. It's going to be very fun to see her develop down at Baylor. And deep down, I just want to see her catch another alley as well. Well, just look <laughs> at her next to Madison Booker on the free throw line right now. Booker stands at 6'1", right? And there's just a discrepancy and an advantage from having someone who can put pressure on the defense like that. Fournier continues to have this outstanding game on both ends of the floor, but really keeping this offense going at different points, it seems like it's tough to score. I think what's been most impressive about her, and we've already alluded to it, alluded to it in this quarter about how she's able to handle the ball, but her vision and where she needs to attack the lane. So her first step is so long and takes up so much space. So getting to the either side of the rim has been impressive. 13 points, eight rebounds for 48. Booker hitting the glass, Williams from outside. Vasconcelos with the rebound. Dursis tosses it up. No go, numbers for Team USA. Williams ahead of the pack. Oh! By Pooch. told that the Australians have been playing professionally and you can see the ability on both ends of the floor. You better act like you heard. I mean, unbelievable. Tracking it. Where did she come from? Great recovery. Was she at half court? She was well behind the play, trailing. She's like, yeah, I need to get that on the gram as soon as possible. That was a <laughs> nice track down. Booker again. Clank. Six minutes to go here in the third quarter. 48 will hang and one. Pass the 48, 15 points and counting. This is the closest it's been since the first quarter. Chris, her activity is just, she just runs the court, outruns the other team and gets a layup. Remember, this woman is 17 years old, dominating right now. Five-point game, she can make it a four-point game. 
This will be the fifth free throw in the second half. Remember, Team World had a difficulty getting to the free throw line in the first half. Only took seven attempts the entire half here in the first four minutes of the second half. They're being more aggressive, please. I think so. I mean, they, they took a, a page out of the USA's book, and they've been aggressive. My bad. I'm smacking on the popcorn. <laughs> I knew this was Listen, exciting. Listen, the popcorn in the arena is amazing. <laughs> But they're doing a great job of attacking the basket, and the, and the referees are rewarding them. Seal inside, Fournier with the block. Wow. She's been the second half impact player. And a charge. Williams takes it, and that's exactly what they needed on defense. Momentum changing play. It was a double Williams, actually, because you're looking at Jada Williams takes the charge. Michaela Williams said, I'll take the cookies. Either way, they get the ball back, and those are the type of defensive plays that you need. Booze, you understand this game. Like, this is a game of runs. Yes, both sides have talent. Who's going to step up and make the winning plays in those possessions? Jada stepped up in that possession. Big job right there because it seemed like the world team was getting the momentum. They were getting some buckets, getting to the free throw line. That charge right there to Chris's point shifted the momentum and takes it back over the team USA. Now they're shooting free throws. Michaela Williams. Uh, for those just tuning in, we appreciate you. Oh, she will not shoot free throws. She will take it out of bounds. Led the gold medalist team in scoring for U16, U17. And she's going to take a seat. Coming in for her, Jaden Donovan. We've seen some excellent plays from her on both ends of the floor as well. Oh, you got to get her the ball on the inside. She's battling. Yes, yeah, so a battle of the bigs. Del Rosario, 6'6", center going to LSU. And battling her inside is Okut, 6'5", center from Kenya. If you see the numbers, you got to get her the ball. And that was one thing that my post player told me. She you gets see it my now. center, you got to get the ball. You got to <laughs> reward them when they are working that hard to establish themselves in the paint. Check it out a second time. <laughs> going right back to it. And you know, that's what coach told us. Sue Phillips said, we want to get a paint touch before we take an outside shot. So this is part of their game plan, making sure that the bigs get the ball and get some shot attempts. She knows all the attempts, breaks everything down. Huge on analytics. Probably one of the reasons she's a math teacher as well in her spare time. <laughs> Del Rosario gets the mid-range and is off. Yeah, you said that. She said, I graded some algebra test and then came <laughs> over to do this. That's exactly what she said I she was that. doing. I love that. She really knows that number at the... Gibb cashing in. We got ourselves a two-point game. Has not been that close since the first quarter. I put by her, scorer in all caps, two-time state champ. And if you leave her by herself, she'll make you pay. Ooh, turnover. Team World can tie it up. Oh, cool. Inside, another offensive foul. And it's Jada Williams on the floor. She has saved two baskets here in the third quarter by taking charges. Welcome back to the Nike Hoop Summit here in Portland, Oregon, here with the CEO of USA Basketball, Jim Tooley. Jim, how excited are you to have the women on this platform at the same time as the men? It's awesome. We have a great young group of young ladies. It's a really competitive game. The uh, international team is strong, and it's, it's only going to grow in the years to come. Take our fans through how you select these women and how they get on the radar to be invited to this opportunity. A lot of these young women have been in our program before playing U16s, U17s, 3x3. So there's a little bit of a pipeline and we have a, a more robust junior national team program which identifies them uh, much at a much younger age. And how big is it for some of these ladies? They've flown 15, 16 hours getting off the plane and ready to play basketball. They're amazing. Like, they're, they're so committed and we have a great continuity with our women's program. And how is Grand Hill doing being a managing partner there with you guys? Yeah, he's doing great. This is his first go around. We have the Men's World Cup coming up in August. And uh, this is his first uh, time putting the team together. And we're excited about that for him. And how long does it take for some of these ladies in the men for this matter to come from high school and learn the, the FIBA rules overnight sometimes? Well, you don't learn them overnight. And again, it, it's having, the having them in our 
pipeline for a number of years that eventually they uh, it sticks with them a little bit more. All right, appreciate you, Tim. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, guys. Back over to you. Great job, 3D, as usual. And Angel, your thoughts on the concept of finally, finally. having the women here because it's it's an, it's it's time. It is time, and just. I mean, the numbers, everything, the trajectory of women's basketball right now, it doesn't even matter that it's this year. It, the fact is, it is this year. And just the numbers, I've had people texting me and saying, I don't know why I didn't see it before, but the women's game is so much fun. And I was watching more of that than the men's game in the NCAA tournament. And so I'm just trying to figure out, like, what took them so long. But at the end of the day, we welcome all new fans because this game will continue to get better. These women continue to get better. It's been entertaining for a very long time. So welcome to the party. And Michaela Williams, that's her third three-pointer so far. And we know she can light it up from outside. And LSU, uh, that's what they did <laughs> to win a national championship. <laughs> Hit some outside shots. They're going to get a little boost. Oh, all over the floor. It was very interesting just to see how many players were able to go completely off at different points of the game. But the three ball is what really allowed LSU in the first half to walk away with a, a decent 17-point lead at half. So I know everyone understands who... Angel Reese's and even Alexis Morris in the second half, but it wasn't that it was just done by committee And that's what I love about this game is not just one or two stars on the team We're seeing a lot of talent across the board not just one or two teams Just a parody women's basketball period was the best I've ever seen it in the NCAA Eva Dora Zaha at the free throw line power forward from Croatia averaged 14 and 10 in a European division this year. Hidalgo with the handles kicks it out. Ten seconds on the shot clock, they'll reset. Pressure is there from Team World. They gotta put it up. Nunu over the defense. Oh, off the glass. The bank is open on the weekend, baby. Banking hours. That's what you're saying, boys. I got you. One more time, Nunu off the glass with the shine. The world team did everything right. I mean, didn't foul, made sure they kept everyone in front. Just a tough shot. Seven point game, three minutes to go here in the third. Travel violation, that is turnover number 19 for Team World. You got a seven-point game, and those 19 turnovers are critical. Well, you can't score without the ball. Hidalgo. So, that lead back up to nine. Yep, leads back up to nine. <laughs> Nunu inside. Oh! <laughs> I can't with you, Boots. <laughs> He's next level. <laughs> Gimble head to the free throw line. And check it out. It's opportunities to just create extra plays for your team, right? Possessions is a big thing for Sue Phillips and what she wants for her program. She knows the numbers, right? She's a math teacher. So she said, I want to make sure that we're giving ourselves more possessions. When you're picking up three-quarter court and forcing them to make a decision or picking someone's pocket, like, that ball was a 50-50 ball. And we saw three white jerseys around it. And then the opportunity on the other side. So we had a three-point game at our last timeout. And since then, it's been all Team USA, Team World, trying to stop that run. Pooch tripped up. Team USA with an 11-point lead. It's a 9-1 to one run. And mind you, they're able to go on these runs without the number one player in the country. And Juju Watkins being on the bench. 
We already mentioned it. We have our own sports breaking news over here with Booze telling us that she wasn't going to be able to be available for tonight's game due to an ankle injury. But I tell you what, she is worth the price of admission. Absolutely. And Team USA can come in with waves of talent. And oh! That is the second time she's made Boozer yell with one of her blocks. Unbelievable. Just coming out of nowhere and just protecting the paint that way is beautiful. A fight for the ball. We'll have a jump ball. Check it out again. Oh! Denying her dog. <laughs> she ate that up like she's just eating this popcorn over here. Big facts. Big facts. You said you had your popcorn ready for the second half. They are not disappointing you. Enjoying the show, guys. Enjoying the show. I will say it's something in the butter or something because this popcorn is very good. No, nope. I don't want any. I'm good. I'm going to wait till break or something. Push back, push back. <laughs> KK has made some impressive plays herself. Williams has made three threes, does not put it up there. What was happening her balance, though? Like, when she catches, she's ready. I love it, and, she, and she's ready to attack whatever she can do to, to help her team win. I like the way she plays basketball. I'm kind of going back in the tank a little bit, but I've always been very impressed. It's, oh, Toby, a nice tank and just stuck it a little short, but comparing Williams almost to like a Kathy Pondex to her yeah. frame and how she's able to just get to her spots on the floor. Very strong. I think she's listed as 6'1", can finish, never looks fed up. Always under control, right? Yeah. Williams inside the arc. Woo! Gets the shooter right touch. on cue. We're talking about 13 points now for Michaela Williams. It's going to be so scary watching LSU for next year, the defending champs. Fournier, the jumper, almost gets it to drop. Final minute of the third quarter. Nudu goes up and can't get the bucket. Nice find underneath. The batter and the bigs. Del Rosario, 6-6, wins over the 6-7 future player at Baylor versus the future player at LSU. Pooch from downtown. And it counts. She can do that. She can definitely do that. She's balanced. Two-second difference to the shot clock and the game clock. The crowd getting into this one. Ten-point game. Hey, 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 Del Rosario, dangerous pass. Hidalgo has to put it up. There's still time left. And that's how the third quarter would end. Frames down and one to go, and Pooch has made her punch in the third quarter. We saw her blocking shots all over the floor. She's so elusive. Her presence is felt all over the floor. And once you think she's done on one side, eh -eh, knocking it down the triple from deep, and that's beyond the feeble line as well. I watched the film on her. The corner three is her look. She's coming over us right now. I want to give her a dap at this point because she's been able to impact this game on so many levels. And we see it now, a 10-point game. They brought it into one possession. They're going to need for her to really have a really big fourth quarter. Three blocks for her alone in the third quarter. She has four blocks in the game. Team World has nine blocks. And that's helped to keep this one close enough and within striking distance. And mind you, we didn't see a lot of Swain in that third quarter as well. So what does she do in this fourth? Ooh. Toby Fournier, 15 points, eight rebounds. Leads the team in free throw attempts and will get her seventh and eighth for you. The Canadian sensation. Carly Clark obviously knows a lot about Pony and what she can bring. I don't think that she was something she wanted. Ball. Yeah, that's she she, you, well, can. Probably seen better days there. That one did hit. Well, oh, that's a good start. 
So the world team has 12 free throws here in the second half. I point that out because late in the first half, they had only taken three free throws. Williams finds some space. It's too short. Foul on the glass, and it'll go against the Cougs. Pressure continues. Hidalgo with the steal against Fournier. Pump fake and it's rejected. Ten blocks now for Team World. Fifth block right there. Doing a great job. He's protecting the paint, gets back and recovers. Hidalgo all over the court right now defensively. Williams. She's the best player in the country. <laughs> I mean, my goodness. Fournier with the handles. Swain fires. She's cooled off a bit. First half, she was unstoppable. Spent an extensive amount of time in the third quarter on the bench. She's going to have to be huge in this fourth quarter. Williams now leads all scores with 16 points. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Fournier inside. And she retakes the lead for scoring with 17 points for Team World. 11 point difference in the game. Did she just like stay in the air for seven seconds? It felt like to get that off. I love time. that. I love it. Williams. Okay. All right. On fire. On fire. For six. Now you can pass me the popcorn because I got this is you. now a show. She is taking over this game offensively for Team USA. Beautiful to watch. Hidalgo on the break, Fournier. Ah! Oh! My. And the tipping. I believe that was Jaden Donovan. And yes. we talked about how her right. athleticism and what she brings to the table. Not only that, as oh. a missed shot of <laughs> Collins is like, how did that not go down? But that ball was still on the rim, and so that's another FIBA rule that we weren't expecting to see in the women's game, but that counts. Touch the ball with no goaltender. 18 point lead. Team USA is on a run. In Team USA on an 8 0 run. They are now up by 18. The pressure, the offense, the skills all on display. Remember this 1976 women's first basketball team formed, and look what we have now. Hall of Famers are back. I mean, it's really awesome when you can see the players of now, but how that has been established because of the players that came before them and established what this game could be. An unbelievable. List. I mean, going down the line, but when you're looking at Ed Myers Trisdale and you're seeing Coach Pat Summit, like, I, I just, I don't even know if I can put it into words how awesome it is that they can be celebrated going into the Naismith Hall of Fame while also seeing how this game has grown in this season alone. And what an amazing time for it to happen. Right, so going back to the 1976 team, if they are listening, and I know we've lost a few, but thank you, because this game has grown because of them. Six for seven from long range, the National Player of the Year is Caliente. <laughs> 22 points for Michaela Williams and Team USA in full control. This has been impressive since this was a three-point game. Michaela Williams has been lighting it up with no shade. 
11-0 Team USA run. Team doing a good job of finding her. You saw the penetration right there by Hidalgo. Kick out to Williams. She's knocked down almost every shot that she's taken, especially the second half. Doing a great job of leading Team USA. But did you see the pass by Shanice Swain? I know that they didn't convert there, but a no-look dish pass on the inside. Those are the type of next-level plays that we were talking about. Dursis trying to create. Swain with some space, Woo. knocked down, right on cue. Well, and here's the thing, it's a spacing. So, okay, the ball is being brought up at, in the middle of the floor. Down the lane, you have to know as a point guard, that gives you more options. Swain understands that, leaks out, feet down, understanding hand in the face still knocks it down, but she's the type of player that, if you're right now a WNBA GM, or anybody in the front office, you're licking your chops. Like, how can I have a player like this that is fearless on my roster. Well, there's Swain at it again, and I see Becky Hammond clapping. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you got eyes on Becky somewhere? Wow. Well, there you have it. Booker off. Del Rosario rejected. Team World down big with five minutes to go, but still pushing the pace. Swain, no. And Fournier will head back to the free throw line. She's been struggling there. Three for eight. So three for nine from the charity strike for Toby Forney. So she has 17 points, but that's a place where clearly she's been struggling. They call them free throws because they're supposed to be free. No distractions, get in your zone, find a rhythm. Games are won at the free throw line. We saw that in the McDonald's All-American game. And KK with the offensive foul hits Pooch in the face with her right arm. Well, KK staying low, trying to get around, but you got to credit Pooch for what she was able to do on that hedge. And as a, a coach, you want to know that if your post player or forward is going to be in a position where they can guard that screen, they, they can hedge. And you mentioned it, Booz. She's very versatile, but also her versatility, her lateral movement has been impressive in this game. Yeah, she is so versatile. She can do many things. Obviously, we saw her block three or four shots, but also knocking down the three, causing havoc on the pick and roll right there. Does a great job for her team. And she'll take a seat as they have to attend her. It looks like her nose. Five minutes to go. Team USA up by 17. That's turnover number 25 for Team World, and that has been the biggest issue for them. Cunningham trying to get the feed from Booker. Swain comes up with it. Looking inside for Fournier. White jerseys all around him. That might have been a bit egregious. She had a couple of players around her. I like the idea of leading her to the rim, especially the corner of the rim. Gibb from the corner. KK with the turnover. Dursis. KK gets the rebound. So we've seen the pace slow down. really slow down for even Team USA. <clears throat> so Phillips seeing more of that execution, that five set. Booker <laughs> with the fillet. Great hard drive to the right. Basket was cleared open, and she got the bucket right there. Eight points now for Booker. Heading to Texas, she said Vic Schaefer was recruiting her since the eighth grade. 
I don't even know if I can make a layup in the eighth grade. Swain with a turnover. KK with a crossover. Oh no, don't do it to her. And a kick out the shade. Back to KK. Off. And Williams inside. Sahara Williams, a stat stuffer type of player, gets rebounds, assists, and of course points. Headed to Oklahoma. She said she believes she's the most versatile player in her class. Fournier just nowhere to go. Smothered. Williams with the board. She says she's versatile. I mean, she went sky high to get that rebound. So impacting on both sides of the floor. Booker, Ooh. why not? <laughs> 248 to go, final stretch. Team World with a full substitution. The outcome decided. Coach Phillips coaching KK about some of the turnovers and mistakes, as well as some of the good things she was doing. Jada Williams checks back in for Team USA. Her story pretty incredible as well. It's really cool. She was originally supposed to go to UCLA and has since then switched over and said she is going to Arizona. She'll be heading there with her teammate, her high school teammate actually, Embrea. And one of the stories, Booze, that I was sharing with you as another three is knocked down. And the timeout is called. I have to get in the story later with Booze. Sahara Williams now with 10 points. The Nike Hoop Summit on NBA TV is brought to you by Nike. He's getting stronger next year. Michaela Williams, 22 points. Eight from 13 from the field. Six for seven from three-point range will join the national champions. She is your national player of the year. And we see exactly why putting on a show here at the Nike Hoop Summit. I mean, she's just solid. You already mentioned her stat line. Is she sweating? Have, have you There's seen no her troop sweat. of sweat come There's off no of sweat. her forehead? This is a player that it just looks easy to her and we can say that but we have to talk about the amount of work that each player has done on both sides to get to this point so where it can look easy for them to compete with 22 points boozer's sweating more eating popcorn than she is <laughs> hitting threes that's because he almost left this world one colonel almost got to him she's been very very impressive guys <laughs> i will say this with a minute 48 to go in this game Jada Williams is impressive. Standing out in this one without Juju Watkins. And I'm happy that she made that shot because I can get back into my story that I was about to talk <laughs> about before go. the break, right? <laughs> so, Booz, just talking about her, she was originally supposed to go to UCLA. Nice move by Pooch. Well, your old step there. Aussie but step for her. Aussie step, you know, I have to put some respect on the country for sure. But when you're looking at how her journey and who she's been impacted by, she talked about her DME, Kobe Bryant. When she was on a visit to UCLA, he never responded. When they picked her up in the car, she drives to a different location. She notices by just being in a different office that that was his office. And he came around the corner. She said that changed her life. They talked for about two hours. We have already mentioned and seen um, your relationship with Kobe, how he challenged people to be better and just the mentality you have to have around him. But we have to mention, too, his impact on the women's game. And he was going for women and celebrating women and investing in women when most people didn't think it was cool as a legend of this game. So I really think it's really cool for her to be able to be on this stage, and I think he's proud. Absolutely. I mean, Cole watched down over all of us, but Cole was such an advocate for women's basketball. Obviously, Gigi was trying to excel in that, in that era as well, doing so much for the women's game, helping so many athletes, men's and women's. And so to hear that story, that just speaks to who Kobe was, so uh, to inspire others to, to be great themselves. Including Sabrina Inescu. Yes, Here absolutely. Their connection and seeing the sneakers even right now i go man it makes me think of kobe bryant yes, in the women's absolutely. game how it's developing we think of uh the late great kobe bryant as well i'll take it going back to the the college level as well i was able to cover 
uh, Louisville and Haley Van Lith, who is now in the portal. Ooh, where is she going? That'll be breaking news sometime, too. But she had a lot of different workouts with Kobe and how he made her work and how she's one of the best players in the nation because of him. So, I mean, the, the list is long, you know, and we can go down the list for quite some time about the different players that he's been able to impact and, and help grow. I tell you what, an impactful player today, Nadia Pooch, in a losing effort here. 16 points, those four incredible blocks, and contesting on defense like he did just there, forcing turnovers. I'm really a fan already. Yeah, and, and someone has to lose the game. But you have to tip your hat to what the world team was able to step on the floor and compete it. They brought this into a one possession game in the, in the second half. And so for them too with Pooch, she's only shown us what everyone has already known on the global game and in Australia. Gibb fires. <laughs> Not shot and let it fly. We'll get two more possessions. Who's? Your thoughts on the game? No, nah, just impressed. The women's game is in great hands, guys. We got a lot of talent coming up all over the all, all over the globe, and uh, excited to see these girls, these women develop, and to see who comes after them. But I'm also excited to watch them at the next level. I mean, they're all going to great programs. They're going to be coached by great coaches, and we'll see some of them in, in the WNBA very soon. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now you got me excited over hey, here. The summer we'll is see, on the way. We'll see Swain in the WNBA uh, in a few months. Hopefully, <laughs> she's going to go from here to entering the draft which is just amazing. We just learned that we will hear from Michaela Williams during the first quarter of the men's game. Why not? So for those tuning in to the Nike Hoop Summit, first and foremost, we appreciate you. Women's game wrapping up now. Looks like 100 to 79 will be our final score. But right after this, we get to see the men's side of the 25th. Another 100 point game. We talked about the points and how this game continues to grow. The highest points that we've seen in the McDonald's All-American game as well. This game continues to get better because the women are getting better and know how to put the ball in the hoop. So this is a new record, 100 points in the Nike Hoop Summit women's game because this is the <laughs> inaugural one. So making history all across the board. It's been amazing to see these wonderful players on both ends. Team World coming together. Remember, they had never played with each other. This is the first time they've come together. And eight or nine of Team USA players have been playing together for years. So kudos to Team World in the way that they competed against this juggernaut. Yeah, absolutely. They had a short week or a couple weeks to get together and get used to each other. They did that. They came out and competed hard. I love watching these women play. They just keep raising the bar. Absolutely. And that's what Angel's talking about. The game is in really good hands, guys. I mean, think about it. The next year when you're saying, oh, we have to at least get 100 points because the bar is already <laughs> set so high. You know, I just think it's awesome to see how they're coming together, the game, NCAA, college, high school, down the line. It's just been a lot of fun to cover, to share the stories, to see them grow, and, and just be in a position to, to talk about it. Like, it's been really fun. It's been fun calling this game with you guys as well. i tell you this much. The thing that's impressed me most this week has been the coaches on both sides. Carly Clark and Sue Phillips. But here is 3D with both Coach Sue Phillips and Michaela Williams. All right, thanks, guys. Coach, I'm going to start with you. That's the kind of defense you were looking for in the second half? Yeah, we were, we were struggling to defend them in the pick and roll situation. So uh, we went with our little matchup zone, um, trying to keep our bigs out of trouble and uh, trying to get in those holes on those pick and rolls. And then we spread them out offensively and get this hot hand over here to Michaela. She was, she was on fire. Just kept getting her the ball as much as possible. Thanks, Coach. And Michaela, talk about the hot hand shooting those threes there in the second half. I mean, all the work I put in finally got off. My teammates kept giving me the opportunity to shoot the ball, and finally, and I executed. How long does it take to gel with all the young ladies when y'all come together and get on the practice court? I mean, not long at all. You know, we played before all together, so it was just like a big family reunion. So much fun to be around the ladies playing the feeble style of basketball as well? Of course, making the new memories, building new bonds, just great friends for the rest of life. And how excited are you to get it with your champions at Louisiana State this coming uh, fall? I'm extremely excited to be on the Mokey's wing, go to work, learn, and just continue to win. Well, keep doing what you do. We love what you do. Thank you.